Hey there, YouTubers! Hi there! Dr. Sheep here. Welcome back to another chemistry video. How's quarantine going? Ah, who am I kidding? By the time you see this, it's over. Right? Right? Anyway, we finally finished all the metals and the things that are close to metals on the periodic table. There are only three sections left to talk about, and only four videos left in the series. Uh, the fourth video is on bonds. But I digress. Today we're going to talk about the non-metals. Duh. Now the noble gases and the halogens fall into this category, but they deserve their own video. So we're going to talk about the other six. Now. Every video in this series, I've talked about why the elements are in the part, the section they are. But as I thought about the nonmetals more, I realized that's a waste of time. So we're just going to talk about the general characteristics and then each one individually. Do, 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 do. Hello, the nonmetals. Oh, oh, sorry, the nonmetals. So nonmetals don't have metal characteristics. Duh. That almost sounded like a double negative. But it wasn't because I have the best writer in the world working for me. Anyway, the nonmetals are brittle and are electrical insulators. I say that, but carbon, the lightest of the nonmetals, uh, kind of breaks that idea. Which is a great segue to carbon. Do people still moonwalk? Is that a thing? Carbon. <laughs> is more important than you think. It's relatively abundant on the Earth's crust. For one thing, you're made of carbon, just like all life on Earth. However, this is an asterisk next to that. By mass, you are mostly oxygen, another nonmetal. The largest percentage of atoms in the body is hydrogen. This makes sense, uh, and you need two hydrogens to one oxygen to make water, which the majority of your body is made of. By mass, carbon comes in second, and by quantity, it comes in third. Even though you are made of a lot of oxygen, carbon is like the glue that holds it all together and makes everything work. Why is carbon so important? Well, it has four electrons at its outermost energy level, and this causes it to kind of want to share those electrons. This allows it to form complex compounds that other elements simply can't. They are either too heavy and metabolic processes can't happen fast enough with these uh, heavier atoms, or they simply don't have electrons in the correct spots. So other than running all life on Earth, what else is carbon useful for? Charcoal that you burn in your grill is mostly carbon. The graphite, uh, the lead in your pencil isn't actually lead, it's graphite, which is carbon. Diamonds are pure carbon that has been heated and pressed over millions of years or grown in a lab. It's funny that carbon is usually black and fragile, but at the same time, in the form of diamond, it's transparent and is the strongest known substance to man. Carbon in a hexagon lattice can do some really fun things. Um, some of the examples are carbon nanotubes, graphene, or C60. <laughs> funny thing about C60, I've mentioned it before on this channel, in a really old video, honestly, I'm not even sure what video it was at this point. Anyways, carbon nanotubes and graphene are said to be materials of the future because uh, carbon nanotubes strength and uh, graphene's electrical conductivity. Just as important as carbon will be in the future, it is also the main preventer of that future. Right now, carbon dioxide has been released into the atmosphere at alarming rates, thanks to human activity. Carbon dioxide traps excess thermal energy here on Earth. This begins to heat up the, act of the planet as a whole. This melts polar ice caps, flooding coastal cities, killing millions and even millions without homes. Global warming causes weather to become more severe. Think Katrina. Where I live, this will destroy crops with, through floods, droughts, and tornadoes. Mean the price of food will rise, or food will simply stop being on the shelves of Walmart because we can't produce any. This will happen everywhere, all because we keep burning oil, natural gas, and coal. One thing, it is better to contain the natural gas or burn it. Just releasing it into the atmosphere is actually worse than just the CO2 alone. 
We can stop all of this though, with solar, wind, geothermal, or hell, even nuclear energy is better if done correctly. Obviously the best solution is fusion, but that's still years if not decades away. We can make a difference. You can make a difference. That's why when I reach or have reached 100 subscribers, I'm planting trees. And will continue to do so as the channel grows. Yes, I could just plant trees myself. Yes, this is a criticism. It's a fair criticism. But this channel gives me the tools to achieve my goals and to help the world. So subscribe and plant a tree. The world will thank you for it. Do 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 Ah, the periodic table of elements. Breathtaking. Bo! Oh, hi there! I didn't know you were there. What's that? You're wondering how I know all of this information? I'm flattered. Well, I have the online sources as per the usual. They're in the description. However, I do have a book I get most of the information from. That book is The Elements, a visual exploration of every known atom in the universe by Theodore Gray. Um, it's an absolutely wonderful read if you're interested in the elements or chemistry, or it's just a great read in general. I read it when I was in like 7th or 8th grade. Anyways, uh, enjoy the rest of the video. Oh, whoa, this video got dark fast. I should have ended with carbon. Anyway, nitrogen is the second gaseous element we've run into. Don't remember the first? It was hydrogen. So what is nitrogen useful for? Well, it makes up 72% of, uh, of the Earth's atmosphere, thankfully, because pure oxygen is not good. More on that later. Liquid nitrogen is a relatively cheap, super cool fluid that is fun for YouTube videos and gets children interested in science when you freeze a rose and smash it like every Tinder girl has done to my heart. Nitrogen is also useful because we can eat it in the form of plants or animals that ate plants or animals that ate animals that ate plants. N2, which is in the atmosphere, is basically useless to most plants. But beans and other, animal, uh, other plants can take it out of the atmosphere, use it, and then actually put excess back into the soil. However, a plant like corn or other plants can't take out that atmosphere and needs it from the soil, meaning it doesn't put any back. And the beans or other plants simply can't put enough nitrogen in the soil to feed corn. And so a supplement amount of nitrogen is needed. This is where we get ammonia. The process for taking nitrogen out of the air and converting into ammonia that can then be put in the soil was the most revolutionary technology for agriculture before the introduction of GMOs. You know, the more I look at the non-metals, the more I realize just how essential they actually are. Uh, oxygen is important and very dangerous for a combustion reaction to happen, or for anything to burn for that matter, which would be a combustion reaction, you need oxygen. Um, you should know that if you're a Cub Scout, so, or a Boy Scout, or Girl Scout, maybe, I don't know. Fun hypothetical here, if the atmosphere were 30% O2, or like anything higher than 21%, which it is now, in theory, things would randomly, could randomly combust. <laughs> Do they just randomly burst in the flames? Um, liquid oxygen, which is pure oxygen, uh, is used in rockets as the oxidizer because it's the lightest oxidizer possible. A fun fact, it has a light blue color to it. And if you put it on your skin, you might not burst into flames, but you could. But at the same time, um, you would freeze. Isn't that fun? Right? <laughs> hmm. Oxygen is also in water, which is important to almost, if not all life on Earth. Much like you are mostly made of water, uh, most of the Earth's crust is actually covered in water. Also, the most abundant element in the Earth's crust is oxygen. Oxygen is essential in aiding reactions in the human body that keep us alive. That's the definition of essential. It's redundant. If you want, you can make oxygen at home through electrolysis. Alright, so we're going to pour the lye in. 
on either side, which is why I'm wearing gloves for this, because don't need much. Oh, that's a lot. Okay. Well, it's going to heat up now, but that's fine. See? Danger. Keep away from children. Right there. So oxygen is generated on this side. Hydrogen is generated on this side. Lye doesn't generate any chlorine like salt does. So, yeah. Voila. See the bubbles generating? Look at that. At right, 0 0.009 amps. To be fair, if we had more conductive electrodes between the two, we'd probably get a lot better results. But, it's working. That's what matters. There's really no point other than to say that you did it, but you can. So if you get a power supply or a battery, just something that provides DC current, while let's provide alternating current, uh, you also then need water, duh, uh, sodium or sodium, uh, salt or sodium hydroxide. Um, if you're trying to make a large amount of oxygen, I recommend you watch the next video in this series. I will actually explain how to do this. Um, the reason you need salt or sodium hydroxide is because water in its pure form does not conduct electricity. Uh, you need a salt to dissolve into it, which causes the water to become an electrolyte and can then can induct electricity, uh, which then allows you to conduct electrolysis. Uh, the reason why you should use sodium hydroxide is because it won't generate chlorine gas, unlike salt, because salt is sodium, sodium chloride. So, how does electrolysis work? Well, in the most basic terms, and honestly, it's a horrible explanation, the electricity breaks the water molecules apart, releasing hydrogen and oxygen. It's a horrible explanation, but I'll explain it all in the next video anyways. Also, if I didn't show any clips of me making oxygen as I'm talking about it, it's because by the time I upload this, I still don't have enough money for the necessary supplies. So, let's see what happens. Phosphorus, that P is for fun if you spell fun with a PH. <laughs> You're going to see why it's a fun element here in a minute. <clears throat> in the podcast... Phil and I discuss meth and amphetamines more than two people who don't do meth should. Uh, when making meth, wow, that's a horrible way to start a sentence. Uh, you need red phosphorus. Why are we telling people this? <laughs> why do I know this? Don't ask. <laughs> um, this is why in modern times you can't get phosphorus. Thank you for making that better. However, the striker on your match. On your matchbox is the easiest for a phosphorus you can get without using eBay. Oh boy, you made it worse. Now what you do with this information I have given to you is up to you. I am but an innocent person talking about the elements. Thank God somebody packed that up. Anyway, phosphorus is a primary nutrient in plants and humans. Unfortunately, phosphorus used in fertilizer is a non-renewable resource. And once we run out of it here on Earth, that's it. Unless we mine asteroids, but again, decades. So we need to be conservative with our fertilizer. Wow, another eco-friendly message. Phosphorus comes in many allotropes, like carbon. What's an allotrope? Uh, it's how atoms arrange themselves when forming, say, a solid. And if they arrange themselves differently, you can give it different characteristics. Um, this can affect the stability. That's why you can have diamonds and charcoal. Which are made of the same substances, but are completely different. But act almost completely different. Um, anyways, th red phosphorus is the kind used in drugs. Why? Why did you write this? <laughs> is the, but it is the most widely used form because it's also on matchboxes. Oh my gosh, this is worse. White phosphorus is very dangerous and was used in incendiary bombs in World War II and, and is still used in warfare to date. Wow, this element just can't catch a break. Um, white phosphorus, if light hits it, converts to red phosphorus, fun fact. Hey, that's harmless. 
Uh, lastly, Black Phosphorus is the most stable allotrope, but is very rare. Wow! I hope I don't get incriminated. Oh. Another element playing in our atmosphere uh, comes in the form of sulfur dioxide. Um, the other element plaguing in our atmosphere, the non-metal, was carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. Funny how dioxides are causing problems. Now, sulfur dioxide causes acid rain when it dissolves into water in our atmosphere to create sulfuric acid. <laughs> sulfur, in general, though, is that dangerous. It's actually a secondary nutrient for the for the human body and plants. Uh, sulfur, in general, though, uh, sulfur has many uses. One of them is in its pure power form as a pH balancer for gardening. Its other main use is in uh, sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid has many applications, from strong household cleaners to old lead acid car batteries. Sulfur is a very smelly element. If you burn it, it would smell like rotten eggs. I'm sure we all can, make, can imagine what that smells like. Sulfur compounds are usually responsible for sweat smelling badly. You know, you have sulfur compounds in our bodies, and well, it just so happens to be in our pits. Uh, one fun thing you can do with sulfuric acid, with the proper safety equipment that is, is to react it with, like, say, toilet paper or normal paper or sugar to produce carbon. Speaking of carbon and sulfur, sulfur is also one of three ingredients in gunpowder, as is carbon. <sighs> Funny thing about carbon, it giveth life and it taketh with bullets. Fun fact, for those of you watching this in the future, I could have gotten this ton, oh my god, hours ago, but uh, I blame Phil. The last non-metal that is not a halogen or a noble gas is selenium. Uh, selenium is an essential micronutrient for plants and animals, actually. Um, like most things, though, uh, too little will kill you and too much will kill you. However, you don't need a fancy vitamin to get enough in your diet. Uh, just eat Brazil nuts, unless you're allergic or guess you don't like them. Selenium is uh, used in xerographic photocopy. Hope I said that right. Which is an interesting process that you can read about in the book on the elements. Uh, it was also used in light meters for photography, but digital photography has since killed that because you can see what your, vi your picture will look like in real time. No need for a light meter. All in all, selenium, in my opinion, is a beautiful element to own a sample of. In some spots on the samples that I own, it almost looks like a metal. Last fun fact for this video. Uh, I got this from the YouTube channel, uh, Periodic Videos, link in the description. They say it is similar, it has similar chemical properties to sulfur. So, if you work with it a lot, do a lot of experiments with it, uh, you can go home smelling awful because it will replace the sulfur in your, uh, the sulfur compounds in your sweat with selenium compounds, which smell worse. Well, there are only a handful of elements left in the series and only two videos left before the Bonds video. Join me next time when I talk about the most dangerous elements in the table, the halogens. But in the meantime, I'd like to thank you all for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. New, po uh, new videos ahead for real the Friday, 2 p.m. Central Time, and good night. Subs for trees, subs for trees, subs for trees, subs for trees. Oh, you're still here? I thought I told you to go home. Oh, you want more? I'm flattered. Check out the playlist. If you want exclusive content, check out my Instagram, doctor underscore sheep underscore YouTube. That's all lowercase. If you want to help the earth, subscribe. When I reach 100 subscribers, I'm going to plant 10 trees. If you feel that's too small, then check out my channel tree where I lay out even bigger goals. Finally, stick around for the next 20 seconds to give me that sweet watch time. Bye.